Rock City Networks and the push coming to you from Face the Music 2010. Joining me, uh, Lindsay McDougall. How are you? I'm very, very well. I'm ready to face the music once again. Yeah, yeah. You're doing the. Uh, you, you've got the, the the chat this afternoon. The the trims and the trappings. <laughs> the t well, no, it's it's fair enough that you don't know the name. It's called the traps and the traps tra and the trim. The uh, traps and the trappings. Traps and the trappings. Sorry. The trials and the tribulations. Pride and prejudice. It's we 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 try to come up with um, Andrew Kitchen, who organises this and does an amazing job, and I were trying to come up with something that. Um, encapsulated everything like basically I wasn't sure what I wanted to, to talk about or discuss so I said why don't we just talk about everything um, and and just give it a cool name give it a hooky name yeah. so we decided to call it the traps in the trappings uh, enjoying the latter uh, no, avoiding the former so you can enjoy the latter um, and it's just basically yeah we're just going to talk about all the stuff as you are a musician at any at any level the kind of stuff that you get, stuff, we're talking about stuff, free stuff, you know, um, we're talking about you know, record deals, uh, product endorsements, getting your songs on ads, all the stuff that really, when you boil it down, apart from the credibility of songwriting and the importance of seeing an audience move to your music, basically it's the free stuff that mm -hmm. people want. And so how to enjoy that without getting caught up in uh, you know crazy 360 deals, which mean you have to sell your second child to pay for them, or you know you know losing your credibility in one you know, badly judged ad for uh, for for, uh, for you know um, genital hair removal cream or something. So it's just basically all the stuff that maybe people like, like we're talking about everything in the music industry, but maybe the stuff that other more specific workshops won't just won't talk about. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it's interesting. It's kind of you're kind of throwing out a net. But mm. it's a very small net in, in a kind of in a kind of a way because yeah. you're getting, you are getting specific on stuff. We are getting very specific, but it's like lots of little small nets in different areas. Because I want to talk about stuff like if you write if you you write an album and um, you know you're a band and it's it's a great album and people love it and you've done but you've done the songwriting splits in such a way that you, there's resentment in the band. Like what happens if you know you four people write the song? But you decide, okay, the person that writes the chorus gets uh, sixty percent, and the person who writes the verses, well, he gets forty percent. But then uh, that person who wrote the sax solo, well, that's another twenty percent. Um, well, actually, that's that's probably more than hundred percent. In any case, you'll you'll eventually breed resentment. You know, that's how bands break up. You yeah. know, there's bands that used to. Um, there, there, there are bands that I know that have used a scoring system, depending on you know what part of the song they wrote and stuff. So that's a trap, you know. It's a little, it's a trap that people can fall. That's got to be the end right there. I mean, are there are there even any <laughs> active bands that are still doing that? Uh, I think they recently. I, I think they recently reformed, as a matter of fact. But I'm not sure in, in what in what situation. In what capacity? In what capacity? That's right. But yeah, it's just just all that kind of stuff. Because I've been a consistent, consistently, vaguely unsuccessful musician for a long time, for yeah. about 16. Uh, well. The band's been together for 16 years. I've been involved in it for about 15, 13 years or something. So I see these things, and whilst I don't get, I don't have much to do with a lot of them because of my unsuccessfulness, um, but I do see these things happen, and so I can, you know, shed some light on them and, and start the discussion. And that's why we're getting uh, other cool people uh, to talk, like Charles from Ice Cream Hands, who's, you know, been on the on the on the sort of cultish songwriting side of success for quite some time. Um, and Jen Cloa, who's managed to write amazing music um, for you know consistently for so long, um, just people who know who's, who have also seen this kind of stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we were just chatting to Jen, and, and she she was so insightful about everything. Mm. And, and I mean, she she doesn't pull any punches either. Absolutely, she does not. And that's the important thing because there's going to be people who who'll probably say to you, "Oh, yeah, you should do that. Yeah, go and just just go and do that. That sounds like a good idea." But really, what they want to say is, you are not ready to do that yet. You know, this gonna, you're gonna, this gonna, you don't need a manager yet, or you don't need a record d deal yet, or you don't need to, uh, you know, go and go on tour, you know, as part of a, um, as part of a so soft drink brand's promotional strategy yet. Yeah. You know, it'll eat you alive. So, you know, I'm sure someone like Jen um, will know that. And uh, and Michael from the Middle East uh, is the Middle East are a band that I, I remember. There was a band called Sleeping in Trains from Townsville, and they were amazing, and they were the genesis of the Middle East. Um, and Michael, who joined the Middle East, and if anyone's heard them, they're this amazing sort of um, introspective yet really sort of rousing uh, indie band. He used to play in House vs. Hurricane, and they're just like uh, the, uh, the Attack Attack or the 303, like sort of you know post-emo kind of band, you know. Yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, he's he's been in different 
you know, in different bands musically and ideologically. Yeah. So, you know, he'll also be able to shed some light on it. Yeah. Now, it was interesting you were saying, you know, with like syncing and getting yourself on, uh, you know, ads or mm-hmm, all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. One, one thing I've, I'd, I'd like to pick your brain about is, uh, I, I can't remember how long ago it was, maybe six, seven years ago, you might be close to the mark with it because it was mm-hmm. your band. Mm-hmm. Um, Friends of Rum, uh, Dreamworld ad, yeah. ad campaign. How did, how did that all come to be? Because, I mean, I just remember driving down the highway seeing mm-hmm. this massive billboard and it's got <laughs> never had so much fun underneath it. You know, that's, this is the beauty of writing a stupid song with a multi-purpose na- song name, song yeah. title. Never had so much fun. I mean, we were originally approached by, uh, by 14 different brands of condoms um, and there was the, uh, the, the state government alcohol initiative. This is all a lie, of course. Um, but basically, we, we got... We got for some reason, our songs, because they're, they're easy, they're easily digestible and stuff, lots of people thought, oh, chuck them in an ad, you know. There was one, there was a soft drink company who asked us, and we said no, asked The Living End, they said no, asked Grinspoon, and they said no. And so they just got a bunch of session musicians to write a song which kind of sounded Sound, like yeah. all of that, you know. Which is another interesting point, too. You know, why should you say no to the money when they're just going to get a band that sounds like you anyway, yeah. and your reputation will be tarnished by a be- without even getting the cash because yeah. people f- there was this song people really thought it was the living end and it wasn't and, and they didn't get cash for it there was another um, it's not even bloody a hair care product or something in the 90 uh, in the, in the two, 2002 I think it was with a girl screaming in the ad that looks so much like Ella Hooper that I actually said what have Killing Heidi done this for yeah. and it wasn't it was just some chick that looked like her you know um, anyway, back because to... Because it's a catch-22, really. It's, it's You're damned if you do and you're damned exactly if you don't. Exactly right. And that's what we're kind of trying to get to the bottom of here. With, uh, with Dreamworld, we, we said, yes, we'll, you know, we, we have no ethical oppositions to Dreamworld. It seems like an okay thing to do. You know, it's not, it's not, there's no sweatshops involved. There's no, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, there's no uh, animal, animals exploited to our knowledge. And we did some checks and that was fine. And, and they, they got us for a six-month period. You know, that they'd use the song and they gave us billions and billions of dollars or whatever it was. And then at the end of it, the ad was still on. And we're like, well, what are you doing? This is six, this is your time's up, dude. Contract loop. Yeah, and they just like, and they, and they, you know, made some amendment and gave us, you know, like 20 bucks or something. And, and at the end of the next six months period, they did what that soft drink company did and got a song kind of similar to Never Had So Much Fun. I think it was like, I haven't enjoyed myself quite as much this time, you know, something yeah, like yeah. that. And 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 they got a re- got a song that sounded a bit like it re-recorded. It's unbelievable. It's I mean, how and how would you imagine that a that a that a company renowned for bringing smiles to the faces of millions of children on in Queensland and visiting tourists rips off some would rip off a, a bunch of idiots from Sydney. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, that's uh, that's the thing, you know, you, you sell your soul to the devil. You've you've uh, you've you've slept with the dog, so you will wake up with uh, you know the dog's teeth around your cock yeah, well, or whatever the hell the cliche goes. I can't quite remember it. Well, I just the, it was just interesting for me because, because as far as uh, you know, growing up with friends of Rome and listening to you guys at high school and stuff like that, you kind of the band that was kind of anti-commercial as far as I was concerned, and mm-hmm. especially I, I remember Livid Two Thousand when you, when you did the Australian uh, Stra- uh, yeah, that's what it was up on the stage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sort of totally taking the piss out of it, but then we see. Um, then we see you go up on an on a ad campaign, and mm-hmm. I believe, was that international as well as national for Dreamwise? Oh, I don't it just, for me, what I'm trying to get at, for me it was confusing mm. uh, to see a band that was, was so, uh, and still are, mm. um, right. sort of passionate about that, that, you know, standing up for the, yeah. the hardworking band. What, what led you to that decision ultimately? It was the money, absolutely, it was the, the money. money. But it was because, it was, it was also, a, a, it wasn't just, oh, we can be on an ad, yes, let's do it. <laughs> and we had been on other ads. We were on an ad for um, uh, a jeans company. This is like just 96, I think it was. It was just shown in movies. That one was probably even less thought out, but it was basically we'd, we'd said no to, to many things on ethical grounds, and we still do to this day. I think um, for about three years in a row, we got offered to play at Casino Beef Week. And we were like, you should probably just listen to one of our many songs about the fact that we're all vegetarian, yeah. um, you know. And uh, and and as I say, soft drink ads. And um, we even had to, we almost took um, a hamburger chain to court when they were advertising. Um, they were advertising at our gig in Western Australia, in Rockingham. Uh, bring your friends or rom ticket to our restaurant to get a free thick shake with every burger purchase. And we're like. You can't go doing that. You can't go riding our coattails. And so we, we were going to take him to court and instead we just firebombed the place and murdered the manager. But, you know, so it could have gone to a, uh, in, into a higher place. 
So for us to do something like that, to actually go, you know, we're going to do a Dreamworld ad, it was like, nah, it's, of all the things that we've been offered, it's, they're not an evil corporation. Sure. They were just, you know, and, and we checked all that stuff out. It's the same when we got offered to do uh, uh, the Boy Scout Jamboree. We originally said no because we thought that they were they they were, had a very anti-gay stance, and we've since found out they didn't. And so we said, all right, sweet, that's okay. That was a the the the, the anti-gay legislation or whatever that was in the um, Boy Scout handbook that Lord Baden Powell had written. Are you serious? Oh, well, no, it was in, it was in it was in their in their uh, in in their their laws or whatever they have. Um, but it had all been repealed, and yeah. so they were actually quite right. fine with gay people. So we're like, sweet, we'll do it. So it's, it's just basically that's that's one of the things I think it's important to discuss is that you can't you can't just say no to all this stuff, and unless you are an openly anarchist band which refutes all forms of capitalism, which you know, for a band that was putting out records printed in a factory, uh, you know, uh, paid for by a record deal, it would be pretty silly to do. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you you really you have to. You have to be able to do that, and I think that was us just going. Well, this these guys are okay. Yeah, we'll have a go with these guys. You know, and just the same as as we we give our songs to you know dudes making movies who want to uh, you know who want to just make an independent movie. Like, yeah, have your have our song, whatever. Um, so it was much the same thing, and it kept us off the dole for like about a year. Fair right. enough. No, yeah, it's good. Before we signed to Sony, and therefore sold our souls straight after that. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, you know, you've got some great lessons to teach and, and you've, all, you, you've had that time in the industry to uh, definitely give out that wealth of information. Yeah, I Is so. it, Like I, I've been asking everyone here, are there things you take away from these panel discussions yourself? Yeah, well, from all of this sort of stuff there is. I, um, uh, I get to meet a lot of musicians, which is important. Like, as much as you can learn from stuff like Triple J on Earth, um, actually meeting people that are actually, you know, trying to play gigs around Melbourne or whatever is, is really interesting. And actually hearing... You know, you hear musicians every day of the week talk about you know, the inspirations behind their album and why they chose that producer and, you know, how much they're enjoying playing the songs live. But what you don't hear is about the time, you know, they were, they, they were you know, trying to find a, uh, a record label to go with or trying to work out whether to record their album independently, blah, blah, blah. The specific stuff that actually would teach you something and that's something you learn here that you don't get in your standard interview. Yeah. So Fair that's enough. what I take away. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, what, what's happening? Uh, is there anything coming up with the band over the next six to twelve months? We are going to be playing the No Sleep Till Festival, which ah, is ah right, yeah, that's yeah. not too far away. It's not. It's so next month. So we got a uh, no. It's, it's happening in December, and we've got it's Megadeth and the Descendants. I get to see the Descendants three times, which is awesome. Now, from memory, that Livid Festival, uh, two thousand, I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. Did you did you fill in on stage with me first in the Gimme Gimme's I did indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a. Um, and the boys will be back for no sleep. They will be back, and I won't. I will not be allowed anywhere near well, their will stage. We, ex <laughs> we expect, won't expect you to see you up there. No, I, I've done. I've done a couple of things with them since. I. Now, um, are you the only Aussie to actually ever play in that band? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's. I think that's, I'm the only non-American to yeah. play in that band. I think. Although Spike would probably call himself Canadian. Who knows? But um, there, yeah, yeah uh, that was purely because Joey Cape had to go, go into a wedding or something, selling out to go to his mate's wedding. Mate, I thought that was great seeing an Aussie up there representing. <laughs> it was pretty uh, fun in, in the lineup. You know, they've got me the, to do a couple of songs since. Yeah, the cocktail bar one side, the, yep. the gambling the other. It was perfect. We it was did. a lovely day. Too. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. I've done it a couple of times since, but I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was literally the last time it happened, I was standing side of stage. They threw me on the stage, gave me the guitar, and made me play Stairway to Heaven. And so it'll probably be something very much the same. I've also played guitar with no effects a couple of times, so if any luck, they'll let me get up and play a song with them as well. Well, it's going to be good, man. I can't wait for No Sleep Till. It's a, yeah. It looks like an amazing festival. Yeah, so. it should be cool. Yeah. And then I will take all of the stuff I learned today, uh, funnel it back to the band, and we're going to be recording an album probably midway through next year. Excellent. One hopes. Fantastic. All right, Lindsay, well, Cheers, thank dude. you very much for your time, thank man. You it's been much. an absolute pleasure. I'm going to get back to the uh, finally appointed upholstery of the Arts Centre. Excellent, yes, and uh, we'll, we'll hear you on the Jays and see you at No Sleep Till. Good luck for the album next year. All awesome. the best. Cheers, dude. Lindsay McDougall here at uh, Face the Music 2010 for Rock City Networks and The Push.